Well, we're really excited to have you. I was loving the part whenever we were, we were backstage and you just said, when I became authentically Catholic, I became authentically myself. And a bunch of us girls back there were like, be still my beating heart, you know? I was like, <laughs> yes. So one of the questions I had for you was, um, what exactly were, you know, growing up and just your whole life and um, now you're a beautiful Catholic mom and you have all this wonderful things going on. What was that transition like from you, like the, what you thought of the younger self, your younger self to like who you are now yeah. and how different that is well, and if that's okay or not? <laughs> okay. Well, you know, what's interesting is when I was younger, I was so uncomfortable with being a woman, Sarah, you know, mm -hmm. to be honest, there are just all these messages in the secular world about what it means to be a woman. And I thought they were true. That's what, you know, I just assumed that my culture must speak truth to me, right? Right. <laughs> must, they wouldn't lie to me. So, uh, so I was trying to be uh, the woman that the right. culture was telling me to be. And you know what's interesting is it felt really wrong in my heart. It just, it didn't feel like this is what womanhood was about. And right. I thought, you know, well, at least I'm not Catholic because we all know <laughs> that Catholic women are oppressed and the Catholic church hates women. So at least, at least I don't have it that bad. Mm -hmm. Right. But then, you know, when I became Catholic, I was shocked to find that all of those insecurities and all of those issues just went away. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I finally am comfortable in my own skin. Right, yeah. I just remembered, just like we did with Sister and Lisa, you guys can text in, or tweet in your questions, which I know Jen brought out. She stirred the pot, which is wonderful. So <laughs> if there's anything that came up during your talk you guys want to tweet at us, um, they then text them in to me, which is really fun. And my phone's blowing up, so good job. Good work. <laughs> um, but I wanted, the other, one of the other questions is, I know that we have, there's a lot of fabulous Catholic women, but I have ran into a lot of fabulous Christian women out there in the crowd too. All so, right. Um, and so other women. You guys are here. That's so awesome. So I know that they're out there and just women that are searching. And I just wanted to know, like, you know, you were there at one time. Just what are some, you know, suggestions and tips for just for the Catholic women, the Christian women, and the, the searching women for just how to get through. I know we've both been in college before. And yeah. just searching for more, like right. what advice do you have for all of them? You know, one of the things that I found really inspiring on my journey, especially as I was getting closer to Catholicism, was to find authors who had once been where I was now. So for example, mm -hmm. C.S. Lewis, G.K. Chesterton, they really spoke my language because I was an atheist or kind of coming out of atheism and they were also former atheists. And so I just felt like their words yes. were so encouraging and just spoke directly to me in a way that maybe someone who was a lifelong believer, that they, they just didn't resonate with me the same way. Right. And so I think, you know, especially when you're in college and just surrounded by this culture that has so much craziness in it, I think it's so important to find these strong spiritual sources. And, and I would start with people who are once where you are now, because I think you'll really feel that connection with them. That's awesome. This is a really good one. This one just came in. How do I, this is like so us ladies, how do I overcome believing that my suggestions are better than God's? <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if you find out. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No, I think, you know, one, one of the biggest keys to my conversion and to my continued prayer life is just the idea of humility. And I, initially, I thought that humility meant low self-esteem. Right, right. And, and it doesn't. I realized, it, this is a great quote that I heard from someone else, that humility isn't thinking less of yourself. It's mm -hmm. thinking of yourself less. Yeah. And when I began to really oh, work I on it. that. Yeah, <laughs> I love that quote. It's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And um, when I began to work through that with confessors and just my husband, trusted friends, spiritual directors, right. it, it just, it was a natural process that I realized God is God, and I am me. <laughs> and I am not see. is usually what I have to tell myself. Yeah, right, yeah exactly. Like, and I am not. Yeah. And, and, and so that sort of process of understanding what real humility is right. was a process of freedom and also mm. just helped me realize that maybe I don't have it all figured out. Right. <laughs> I know. I know as women, I think I talk a lot with other women about just control. Yeah. Just feeling like, man, I don't want to lose control, especially of my life. Yeah. But handing that over is, it's very hard, you know? One other thing I just loved was, didn't you guys love her sparkle with self-forgetfulness? Wasn't that mm -hmm. so good? Yeah, that sister Bridget I have a hates. terrible mm -hmm. Boston accent, but I'm going to adopt <laughs> one just so I can say it like that. So, um, But I just love that idea because I think a lot of times, 
self-forgetfulness, self it's like you think, I'm just going to like fade into the background. Yeah. I'm just going to be a wallflower. But it's quite the opposite. It's like, right. no, I'm going to go reach out and right. I'm going to go find someone and love on them. And your whole demeanor changes, your whole mm -hmm. life changes. And that was one of the questions that came in for you was, um, how did your conversion, when it did come about, how did those around you react? So it says here, your parents, your gay friends, others. Okay, well, um, interestingly, my dad was our biggest supporter. True to his word, he said, you know, I raised you to seek truth and to question assumptions, and I don't understand why you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> but even, you know, when we converted, I, I have a blood clotting disorder that's exacerbated by pregnancy. All these doctors said, you know, you have to go the route of sterilization, contraception. It was a very difficult time. And my dad was actually, you know, our biggest supporter and said, you believe that you have found the truth here and you need to follow that. So awesome. it was amazing. Yeah. And so, so we actually had a surprising amount of support. And, um, yeah. and, you, and you mentioned um, my, my gay friends. Kind of an interesting thing happened. Yeah. When I clarified how Catholic teaching is different on those issues, you know, there are some voices in the culture that uh, they advocate for traditional marriage, which is great, but they understand marriage a little differently than we do. Kind of like, you know, you, you get a get out of sin free pass, you know, as soon as you get married. And it's a, a couple times it's come up with my gay friends and they'll say, you know, you're calling us to make these sacrifices. And, and I'm like, look, I use natural family planning. I have a blood clotting disorder that is exacerbated by pregnancy. I've almost died in two of my pregnancies. Like we've got to take NFP really seriously. Like don't talk to me about sacrifice. Like, I just, I, I go for this shock and awe element. I'm like, I am sacrificing all the time. So yes, you would have to carry a cross to embrace what the church teaches. And it is very difficult, but I am carrying that cross too. And I can tell you that following that path and carrying that cross is a path that will lead you to more joy and more freedom than you have ever known. Yeah, amen. It's so good. I love it. I really liked, you talked a lot about no fear, you know, and I think as women, almost all of our overreactions or reactions, a lot of them just come from fear and, um, or anxiety. You know, like yep. I struggle with anxiety. I know a lot of women do. And I just remember um, we were talking about our mother Mary and you mentioned, you know, I think being a convert is, is I mean, the Mary thing is always, for a lot of yeah. my friends, it was, that was like one of the last, like Pope and Mary, it's very, those are like the big, the big two. Yeah. How was your relationship with Mary like so important? This is one of the questions. Um, and how do you develop a better relationship with her if you don't already have one? Yeah. So my relationship with Mary happened pretty immediately. Interestingly, my husband, who converted at the same time, he was raised anti-Catholic Baptist. It's funny, the only thing we had in common spiritually when we got married <laughs> is that we were both anti-Catholic. So he converted what at the same time. What a great starting point. Yeah, I know, I, mean, I know, yeah. Lots of guessed. dinner conversations right <laughs> <I know>. there, right? <laughs> I know, it's, great. it's crazy. So, um, so, he, so he had the, all these issues with Mary, and so we'd be mm -hmm. reading about Catholicism, because we're nerds, and that's how nerds convert. Mm -hmm. So we'd be like lying in bed reading all these books. <laughs> And he'd say, oh, this Mary stuff is crazy. I love it. And I'd, and I'd say, Joe, the creator of the universe, the one who made all the galaxies and all the world and everything from the beginning, he chose his own mom. <laughs> Don't you think she'd be pretty special to his one true church? You know? <laughs> so I love that, it. That Mary, I, I had no yes. issue with Mary. I actually, I had no issue with the papacy. I saw the need for leadership. It's those things for me were that's awesome. That that was easy once I came to believe in God, obviously. Yeah. But but <laughs> yeah, that, that was just the hard part. Them off. I mean, just checking what, them yeah, off. Yeah, it was very smooth right, once I got to the you know God exists part. <laughs> um, but uh, but so here's I but I did not have a relationship with Mary because I thought well the church says it's optional and like you know right. who needs more you know, stuff in their life. So I'd, I'll, I'll opt not to do it then. And one day, I'd been Catholic for about seven months, and I said, you know, Lord, I've noticed that all the holiest people I know really love your mother, I and mean, they are so into her. And I said, I, I, don't, I don't think I really need a relationship with her, but um, if you would like me to have one, uh, you know, let me know. <laughs> and I mean, if this were a movie, I mean, it would be like Jurassic Park, like you feel the vibration in the ground. Holy Spirit hit me with a ton of bricks. So let me just tell you this. If, you're, if you don't have a relationship with Mary and you're not sure about it, all I ask you to do, just pray. 
Mm-hmm. Ask God if he wants you to have a relationship <laughs> with his mother. And then, like, get on some full body armor. I mean, because it's like, it's going to get nuts really quickly in your life. I love it. And then call Jen and be like, thanks a lot, lady. Yeah, so, yeah tweet me. I'm on Twitter. Like, tweet yes. me. Tell me how that goes. I always love how um, we talk about saints stalk us. Yeah. Do you guys ever oh, feel yeah. stalked by saints? Yes? Yes. St. Yes. Faustina stalked me for like three years. It was awesome. Yeah. Was our, like, our Lady of Guadalupe? Yes. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, 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 yeah. So, if you want to get even crazier, ask Mary to stalk you. And, hey, yeah. anybody else want to stalk me? I'm yeah. interested. So. <laughs> yeah, Mary will fangirl yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> so, fangirl some saying, I'm interested. Um, I, w- I just had a tweet come in. How did your kids, how is it different raising your kids? with the Catholic faith versus where you would be if you were an atheist? It's a whole lot better when they ask you what happens when you die. <laughs> that was just so awkward <laughs> for an atheist. Like, well, we're all dust. And it's like, going to be... return to nothing. So, it's going to be rough. A bummer. Um, <laughs> my, it's going to be rough. It's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's challenging because I feel this weight of like, I'm such an imperfect Catholic, and now I have witnesses to it. <laughs> oh, kids. you're not alone on that one. No, 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 no. But... No. Um, yeah, it was. It, it, it's been quite an experience. It's, we had my son baptized when he was three. Um, you know, religions debate whether adult baptism or infant baptism. Nobody advocates for toddler baptism. There's a reason for that. <laughs> he ended up screaming, "I don't want to be baptized!" As the holy water was poured over his head, <laughs> I had to drag him kicking and screaming out of the church. Oh, oh my it gosh! Was so, uh, I love it. <laughs> Toddler baptism. That You're was right. my indoctrination into Catholic parenthood. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> Toddler baptism. Note to self. <laughs> yeah. That's so fun. Okay. I love it. So, <laughs> one last question for Jen. So, if you could go back to college and be, you know, talk to yourself, yeah. what is the one thing you would tell yourself? Put down that beer. <laughs> 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 I love it. No, I, I love it. I would say, um, I would say, because I was a <laughs> raging atheist in college. I would say, you know, college Jen, you think you're seeking truth, but you're really only open to the answers that validate what you already believe. And all those Christians that you're so quick to write off and to make fun of and to disparage, maybe you should actually take five minutes to listen to what they have to say. Maybe even ask them a couple of questions before you write them off wholesale. Because the truth is so much bigger than you can imagine. Mm, I love it. (laughs) 